Hey, I'm Wesley. So in this video, we're going to talk about tiling window managers. So the first question that you may ask is, what is a window manager? And a window manager is the little piece of software that runs on your computer that's in charge of drawing all of the windows on your desktop. Um, so, uh, you know, you've got your file explorer open over here and your, you know, um, internet browser open over here and the, the window manager is responsible for drawing those in their place. When you click and drag, it moves them to wherever you're going to drag them to. It'll maximize windows when you click the maximize button, etc. That's what a window manager is. And sometimes they're built into other parts of the soft, uh, so other pieces of the operating system, but in general that's kind of how window managers work. So the next question is, why would you want to change your window manager? And there's a couple of reasons why you might want to change your window manager. Uh, one could be to increase your workflow efficiency. And what I mean by that is how fast you can get your windows organized and get started uh, doing work uh, on your computer. One of the things that increases my workflow efficiency uh, 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 with using a tiling window manager is most tiling window managers by default when you open up a new window, uh, automatically use up as much space on the desktop as possible. So you just open a new application and it'll maximize pretty much to fill up the entire screen by default. Most tile and window managers do this. And then when you go to open your se a second ac application, <clears throat> it will generally, most tile and window managers by default, will uh, split the screen into two columns, putting your first window on one side and the new window on the other side, um, and still filling up as much space as possible, and so on and so forth as you open windows. <clears throat> now, I personally find that I prefer to use as much of the desktop space as possible when I'm opening a new application. Uh, some people will, you know, open a window and prefer to just have one window kind of open over here in the corner of the screen, uh, and just kind of work on that little quadrant of the screen. Um, but I prefer by default to have as much screen space as possible if I only have one application that I've got up and running. Okay, the other thing that, uh, at least for me, increases my workflow is that tiling window managers um, by default are generally all keyboard driven. So in order to move windows around on the desktop, uh, they're actually all command shortcut, like shortcut keys that you, uh, so you can use your keyboard to move them around instead of having your hand over to your mouse to move them around. And this keeps, for me, keeps my hands on the keyboard more uh, so that when, I'm, when I've got all my windows organized, I can get in and start typing a whole lot faster. Okay, another reason you might want to use Tiling Window Manager is to increase your system's uh, efficiency, your resource usage, uh, or rather, to increase your system's efficiency by decreasing the resource usage. Um, a lot of graphical window managers today have a lot of transparency and animations and sometimes 3D stuff going on that uh, kind of uses up a whole lot more resources than is really necessary for average computer usage. Uh, and tiling window managers by default, out of the box, come pretty much stripped of any kind of crazy animations. and. <clears throat> When you go to such a bare-bones type of window manager, it uh, makes your CPU and memory usage of just the window manager uh, decrease. So those are some reasons why you might want to use a win tiling window manager. So where can you find tiling window managers? Uh, our, the Arch Wiki has a really great table of a bunch of tiling window managers, as well as what libraries they're using and whether or not they are uh, currently being maintained, and a lot of other information, so you can look there. Uh, you may even be able to browse GitHub to find tiling window managers that aren't there, uh, or you may, you know, use some other kind of tool searching and comparing website like Slant or Stackshare. All right, so now let's get into it. Uh, I've got here a freshly installed Ubuntu Linux system. So what you'll do first is open a terminal, and then run sudo apt install i3. The first window manager we'll install is i3. It's a really popular tiling window manager with some great you know, configuration options. All right. 
So uh, from here, what you'll probably need to do is reboot. That's what I had to do. At least maybe that's just the way it works in a VM. Some people say you can just log out and log back in, but I find that I have to actually reboot the system. So I've rebooted my system. And now when I come to the login screen, I have the, uh, under this gear button, there's an option to uh, start I the I with the i3 window manager. So type in your password sign in. By default it'll come up with this box uh, asking if you want to create this config file. Just I normally hit yes and then you can choose a uh, mod default modifier key which is the key that you kind of use to trigger all the other keyboard shortcuts. I usually use the Windows key. <clears throat> Alright. Alright so you can get started by pressing the Windows key and the enter key to open a new terminal. Uh, and this just opens your defaults terminal, which is probably, uh, if you're in Ubuntu, it'll probably be the GNOME terminal. Uh, and then, uh, what I, from here, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to install Arander, which is a tool that'll allow me to adjust the resolution, because it's kind of off here. Run to do apt install Arander. This part isn't required, but I think it's because I'm in a VM. But uh, that'll allow me to kind of uh, introduce how to open a new application. So uh, to run an a new application in i3, uh, you press the uh, by default you press the Windows key and the D key, and that'll open D menu, which is this bar at the top. And uh, you can type in the name of an application you want to open. For example, Firefox. In my case, I'm going to open Arander, and then I'm going to come in here and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 hit apply alright looks a little better okay so then Windows Shift Q is what closes a window alright so that's i3 I'll install another tiling window manager called VSPWM which I just heard about recently and I've started using on my own system and it's pretty min minimalistic. So to do that, you run sudo so apt install bspwm. That's the window manager. Now, this one is so minimalistic, it doesn't even have a <clears throat> way to handle uh, using keyboard shortcuts to control it. So there's another application you have to install called sxhkd, and that's what manages uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and then uh, run that, type Y for yes. All right, now before you just uh, log out and try to log in with BSPWM, there's a bunch, there's a few configuration files that you need to generate. So first you need to create a, uh, in your home directory, you need to create two, two folders. Uh, one is called under dot config BSP, screen like this, BSPWM, uh, and the other is called uh, SXHKD. All right, so now if we look under config, we should see those two directories. All right, then what you'll want to do is uh, install, or are you going to want to copy the config files from their delivered location, which is from uh, under user, bin, no, it's user local, share, user share doc, BSP, yeah, I'll put that in the description. Uh, and then examples, BSPWMRC, we're going to copy that to the config directory. And likewise, copy sxhkdrc into its config directory. Now there's one other thing you need to do before you try to log in with BSPWM, and that is you need to change those files to be executable, because they're basically just shell script files. So run chmod plus x on your new config files.
All right, now you should be ready to uh, reboot your system and try to log in with BSPWM. To exit i3, you type i3 exit. All right, now we'll do a reboot and hopefully everything will go smoothly. But we shall see. All right, machine's back up. Click on your user icon. This time, sign in with BSPWM. All right, now you'll probably get just a blank screen because that's by default what BSPWM looks like. Okay, well the good news is that if D menu was installed on your machine, which I did have it, you can press Windows space and that'll open your application launcher. Uh, so just type in GNOME terminal to open a terminal. I don't know why Windows key enter didn't do anything, but we can find out why by looking at the keyboard shortcut configuration. So let's use Vim and look at that file. Because Windows Enter uh, attempts to run your XVT. So you want to change that to your terminal. Maybe you already have your XVT and it's not a problem, but I didn't, so I needed to install or I need to set it to GNOME Terminal. And that all looks good. The other thing I was going to show is um, BSPWM, the uh, documentation says that Lemon Bar is one popular bar that shows, like, you know, date, time, battery status, etc. <clears throat> and so I'll push a link to the documentation for that so you can take a look at that. Anyway, let me know if, if there's a tiling window manager that you like. Um, I'm always interested in learning about new tiling window managers. The latest one that I've been using is BSPWM, that's what I've got on my machine. So comment below if you've got a tiling window manager that you really like, or some custom configuration that you like setting up. Recording in progress. Hi. Hi. Hey, Daddy, what are you doing? What? I love you. Happy. Love you.